when von Martin was speaking, um, he, he gave the number and he said anybody who feels they have the call of God in their lives to be missionaries or motivated to be missionaries, they should call this number. So he gave the number. I don't even think he had left the studio. I think I called. Immediately he gave the number. I just called. And so I was requested to go for an interview. So I went for the interview. Yeah, and uh, they took me. And that is how I ended in Yukunda Mission School. Before the training, now that I, I've, I'd, I'd, uh, the call of God was in my life, I want you to confirm first. Is it really God who's calling me to Yukunda Mission School? So I was skeptical i was not sure so i wanted to really confirm after the interview i wanted to really confirm if it was god who was calling me so i i, I asked god please god i don't want to make any mistakes please confirm to me if you are the one calling me to kuna mission school and um the first thing that god did was uh he knew that i had fears in me yeah and uh you know to be a missionary somehow you really need to be bold yeah, and initially, before that, I had not even stood in our church to give a testimony. So the first assignment that God gave me, first, even before anything else, he asked me to go and prophesy. Yeah, in our church. I was so scared. I said, God, this is a huge assignment. I've not even stood to give a testimony. How do you even go and testify? Then he gave me the, um, the scripture, Ezekiel 37, prophesied to the dry bones. I was, I was like, my God, how am I going to do this? So I was so scared, but I gained the courage to go. I, that, it was on a Sunday, so I went. And, but before I stood, oh my God, I was shaking, I was sweating. But finally I stood and walked to the pulpit. And when I reached the pulpit, as I was going, I felt like chains were being broken. Chains were being broken, like fear was being, you know, being removed away from me. So I went to the pulpit and then I went uh, in the time of the testimony time. So I went to the pulpit and I just uh, I gave this, it, it was testimony time, but it's like I prophesied just as the Lord has had spoken to me. So after that, I'm still like, God, it's not enough. I still need you to, you know, confirm to me. So I go to church this time, it is on a lunch hour. And a visiting preacher had just come. He's a friend of the church, but he had just come to visit. And he picked me. I was seated in the middle, in the center. He picked me, said, you lady, I was wearing a red suit. You lady in red, come. I, I'm looking behind. I'm like, yeah, you, you come. So he, I, I went and he told me on my face, God is calling you to kingdom service. God is calling you to serve him. And he prayed that God would give me grace to serve him. He, I, I'm, not, I'm sure maybe he didn't know why he had carried the anointed oil, but he had the anointed oil, anointing oil with him. He anointed my hands, and I felt again like a fire cut through my stomach. So he prayed for me, and after that he told me, go and serve God. So that, that was my confirmation. And so I talked to my reverend, and uh, my reverend advised me. My reverend, he's uh, Reverend Peter Kamau. He advised me, don't go to Kunda Mission School until you get a pulpit release from the bishop. So on a Sunday morning, so I requested, I told my bishop that I was leaving. So on a Sunday morning, the, that was the last, the final confirmation of from God. I told God now, I need a pul pulpit release from my bishop. And I pray that uh, you'll just make it happen. So I was carrying my tithe. I was carrying my tithe and I prayed God. If really this is you calling me to Ukuna Mission School, as I put my tithe on the altar, let Bishop see me, call me, and uh, inquire about the day I'm going, and release me. And it happened exactly like that. I went and put my tithe on the altar, and Bishop saw me. He called me and asked me, Angel, when did you tell me you're leaving? I told him on Wednesday. He said, okay, fine. I went back to my seat. And later, the Bishop, before he preached, he called me to the altar. He prayed for me, he blessed me, and he released me to go and serve God. And that is when the Genesis to Kunda Mission School started. I had the blessings of my parents, my mom, Mary, and my dad, Zach. I had the blessings of everybody that God wanted them to bless me. Every blessing that I needed. In fact, I prayed to God. 
I don't want to leave my blessings. I need, I want to carry my blessings with me. So God would instruct me, go to a certain person, get the blessings from there. So I needed blessings from my bishop. So he blessed me and he told me now go and serve God. So when I went to Kunda, I trained for six to seven months. After that, I was posted to Nungalunga first. Uh, so when I went to Lungalunga, actually before I went to Lungalunga, I think I've missed on something. Uh, still, when the Lord was calling me, he put it in my heart. And um, he said, Angel, I have I've really, I've healed you. I've given you life. I've given you hope. And I want you to do the same to young people out there, to young girls out there. And he gave me a vision. And he gave me a name of the vision. And... Uh, Actually, it was supposed to be a club. It's a club, a ladies club, as the Blossom Girls Club. The Lord gave me that name. And he told me, I want you to be, you know, to be a, like a role model. I want you to go out there and give hope to young ladies, to women. Encourage them. Give them life. Give them what I gave, I gave you. And um, I wrote the vision down. That was still when I was in my workplace. I wrote the vision down. And as I was writing it down, I even printed it by faith. Everything I was doing by faith. I printed the whole vision and um, I remember telling God again. You know, I was still young in faith. So I was still telling God. Anytime God would tell me something, I would always tell him, God, confirm really. If this is not me, if this is you, just confirm it. So I was, I was telling God to confirm it. There came a young girl. She, was pre she called me. She called, the young girl called me and said, Angel, uh, can I talk to you? I told her, sure, you can talk to me anytime you want. I'm available. So she came. I directed her to my workplace. She came and told me, you know what, Angel? I am pregnant. And um, I wanted to have an abortion. And I had the medicine in my hands. But before I could have the abortion, just when I was about to, a voice told me, go and talk to Angel. So I didn't have your number. I looked for your number, and that is why I'm here. I said, oh, thank God. She has come at the right place. So I advised her accordingly. And, I, you know, she was like, God was bringing her to, her to me because, God, you have raised a son, and um, her fear was the stigma. So maybe she wanted me to just give her hope to work with her until her time of delivery. And um, I encouraged her. I talked her out of the idea of the abortion. I even took her to church and, uh, and, and, and she, she, she got to just be helped. And after that, um, she brought another pregnant girl. So they became two. That girl was in university. The other pregnant girl was, girl was in university. So I talked to them. And I, 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 because I wanted to, to work with them, I told them, why don't we have a meeting every Wednesday? We meet in church every Wednesday. We just talk. I just, we just encourage each other. So we set up a meeting and we meet every Wednesday. So after that, the Lord, now, after, now that day they, that girl came, when she left, that is when the Lord told me, this is what I want you to do now. So I went to Mombasa, to Kunda Mission School. I went for the training. And when I went to Lunga Lunga, uh, the Lord reminded me of the vision he had given me. He told me, you remember the vision of the young girls? Now this is the time. So the Lord opened my eyes to see the young girls that were pregnant by the age of 12. Pregnant by the age of 13. 14, they are mothers. And I was burdened in my heart. And I was like, what can I do? So the Lord put it in my heart to go to schools and villages talking to these young girls. As I evangelize and do my normal missions, I also took time to go to schools, ask for opportunities, and give guidance to these girls. And um, I realized most of these girls, they get pregnant because of untimely advice. They do not have enough guidance. They do not have enough motivation from home. Some of them, their parents never, most of them, their parents never went to school. And uh, they, they don't see uh, sense, so much sense and uh, any hope, really. In, in, in education, you know, because most of them are dropouts. So 
when they drop out, they're like, the next thing, get married. That is, that's the life for them. And so the Lord just opened my heart and I, I, I just carried the burden within me. And I went to schools in that area of Lunga Lunga, asking for opportunities to talk to the students and especially the girls. So the club opened right there. It started right there in Lunga Lunga. And uh, I thank God for the favor that God gave me. There's no school that I ever went and they denied me access to those girls. God knew the need and the teachers knew the need that was there. Anytime, anytime I'd want to talk to them, after classes, they would allow me to talk to them. Sometimes they would even give me a, a, a session, even at, maybe even before, before uh, the classes were over. And so I really empowered those girls in Lunga Lunga. I guided them and uh, by the grace of God, by the grace of God. And I thank God that um, even if not all will change, at least even if 10 or 5, then it is worth it. By now, I've, I think I've gone to over 40 schools and thousands, reaching to thousands of girls, thousands of girls. Yeah, because there are times I just even talk to not just the girls, but the need is so great, I, I have to even to talk to the guys, to the boys. Yeah, and but when I go to high schools, especially, I go in the platform of the CU, I go to preach, so I, I, I talk to the girls, I talk to the boys. But when I, I am going specifically to do guidance and counseling, I just go like give, the, give them biblical wisdom concerning how they should live, you know, the, a life of purity, uh, a life that pleases God, how they should just allow the word of God, hide the word of God into their hearts as young girls. And that is how they are going to avoid all these messes. And I, I am trying to help them not to get themselves into, into some some messes, you know, some, some, the same mistakes, some mistakes that I made as a young girl. I'm really trying to make sure that they don't repeat the same because God has given me an assignment and I really have to do it. And so my, my prayer is that at least even if not all will change, but at least the life of two or three girls or ten, because God is able, are changed. And um, the topics that I go with most of the time are topics that God gives me. Uh, this is not like uh, topics in a book. These are topics that, that God gives me. God, I remember God giving me the topic of just principles. Just tell my girls to be principled. And uh, he showed me this beautiful house. There were two beautiful houses. And one, beauty, one house had all the, the, you know, all the expensive goods. It was locked. It had, uh, it had locks in it. And um, the other house had all these expensive goods in the house expensive you know everything was just expensive it had money it has jewels everything that is expensive but one house was locked the other house was not locked and so the lord i saw people come into this unlocked house and steal from it and so in the morning when i woke up i was asked god now god what is the meaning of this he told me tell my girls to have principles once a girl has principles it's like a person who has locked the house the house is secure so no tom dick and harry can come in and steal from them so these houses are these girls. So once you have principles as a young girl, you will know Tom, Dick and Harry will come to steal your virginity, to steal your dreams, to steal your reputation. Yeah, so this was the message that I went to school with, principles. The fear of God and hiding the word of God in their hearts. And also just being responsible with your own life because you only have one life to live and they ought to be responsible. Yeah, so these are some of the topics and also respect. God also brought me the, the topic because it's something I've noticed in Mombasa, in some, not all, in some young people. They, they, some can be really disrespectful. So I have been talking to them and advising them to respect their parents, to respect their, their elder their, their elder sibling, I mean their elder brothers and stuff like that. So, and I thank God that so far so good. The response has been positive. They, they have really received these messages. And also there's something that I was taught in school um, when I was being trained. There was something we were taught about covenant. You know, people think that, people think that sex is just casual, but it's a covenant. Anytime you're having intercourse, you're making a covenant. So whatever is in that guy becomes yours. And whatever is yours becomes his because it's a covenant. So I was just creating this awareness that sex is not just fun. 
but you're making a covenant. You're getting yourself into something deeper than just having fun. The challenges, of course, are there because most of these girls, like for example, there are places we used to go to and I would ask them, my dear girls, now, why do you think this is happening? You guys are getting pregnant at such an early age. And they would tell me, um, it's because of poverty. They would just tell it to my face, you know, Angel, yes, you are telling us to quit this behavior, to stop this. My parents can't even afford a meal, you know, like I, in my home, we can't, there's no way we can take lunch. I mean, breakfast, take lunch and take supper. If my parents can only afford one meal in a day. So if there comes this guy and, 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 and offers to help me out with uh, some money to buy some jeans, some oil, some, you know, braid my hair, you know, I just take the offer. So most of these girls are tempted, are lured. Uh, because they have needs and they want their needs met. The basics, you know, their parents cannot afford the basics, food, you know. So they find themselves just falling into this trap of these guys because they want their needs met. Uh, and it's a challenge because um, you ca we cannot afford to go providing the basics for the girls, you know. So the only thing we can give them is advice. They take it and it will help them. So some do take it positively and they change. But some are like, yes, we hear what you're saying. But still, we still need the money. So I think um, the problem is deeper. And it, it calls for, you know, just um, the parents being sensitized, the communities. You know, it's, it's not something that I can do alone. It just needs, we just need to come together. Thank you for staying with us. We are taking another short break and we'll be right back to know more about Okunda Mission School.